If you build it, he will come. While that message may have worked for Ray Kinsella in Field of Dreams, when he plowed up his cornfield and replaced it with a ball field, that advice can prove disastrous for a startup. So we go to a lot of conferences and we hear people uh, oftentimes pitching ideas for, uh, for businesses and then you know, we speak to a farmer or a couple of our farmers and they ask kind of why do I need that data and that's the question we always think about first before we pursue especially what you'd call kind of an ag tech investment. You know, the if you build it they will come I think maybe works in some businesses but at least in you know, our experience in agriculture it's harder. You know, there's, there's just simple technology reasons in, you know, revolving around broadband access, there's simple there's also the reason, you know, the average farmers, you know, in the late 50s, early 60s, and so there's just kind of, you know, how people perceive of technology value. There's a lot of reasons that startups fail. Sometimes it's for lack of money. Sometimes it's because they uh, run out of money too soon. Uh, they also are, th I think, sometimes don't put themselves in the commercial context. A, a, a startup to be successful needs to anticipate where those revenues are going to come from. And it's uh, oftentimes a failure to find a good partner or an unwillingness to find a partner. Many people who invent ideas don't like to share that invention very well. And successful startups require a whole lot of sharing. According to industry statistics, 71% of new businesses go bust within 10 years. While the odds look bad for aspiring entrepreneurs, there is a growing trend to reduce that number by offering ag tech startups the support necessary to be successful. About a year ago, coming out of this year's symposium, we started talking about the technologies that would transform agriculture. And one of the big ones definitely was um, digital technology. It's a space that we're not typically involved in. However, we felt that with the number of startups out there, we would like to have them present at this year's symposium. So we created a competition uh, with the intent of mentoring them and working with them towards making presentations here. Uh, I think what's been exciting from our perspective is that we've learned a lot from the process. In particular, obviously a little bit more about the ecosphere of what's coming, how those technologies might transform agriculture and more broadly food production. Um, some of them definitely will disrupt and or potentially lead to, um, really lead maybe even to the extinction, the, 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 the closure of some businesses that have been around for quite a while. So I think one of our concerns is to understand that as well. Is that real? Might that happen? How might it happen from a disruptive perspective? So a startup can expect in our program 100 days, a really intense time to work with investor companies, mentors, and our entrepreneurs and residents to really round out their team and give them some structure currently so that when 100 days is over, then they can be launched into the market and ready to go. What excites me most about the Iowa Agritech Accelerator is that we're going to have such great collaboration and innovation happen in such an intense time. It's going to be wonderful to see how everyone grows and changes and also show each other what new ideas and how we can work together can really create something wonderful. Ag tech startups have also piqued the interest of investors. So what makes a startup ripe for investing? We are typically investing in what you'd call series A and B companies in kind of growth stage companies that have some proven technology, some proven concept that are looking to scale commercially. Oftentimes that means you know, evaluating the, the, the new market that a product's going to enter into or the capacity to produce at a, at a higher scale. Uh, we've made uh, three investments to date in the process of a fourth for this current fund and they're all in agricultural production. Uh, so one is a hops farm in Michigan serving a growing craft beer industry which is a you know growing at 20 percent a year the last five years. And what we liked about them is it's a it's a proven agricultural product with a proven market and we were taking the risk to, to scale them and, to, and taking on the kind of sales and marketing risk. I come from a finance background and what I particularly look for is the strength of the financial plan. In other words, the, the two or three paragraphs, the elevator speech, so to speak, I get past the elevator speech very, very quickly. Show me the numbers. Show me what your projections are. Show me the reasonableness of the projections and why the basis of those projections and also where are the risks in those projections. Uh, I'm much more comfortable in having a numbers conversation than a conversation about um, uh, business trends or, or, or environmental trends. Uh, yes, they are important, but the numbers are going to be what sells me and what would allow me to invest or not. 
As the ultimate end user, it may seem obvious that farmers should be involved in the development of ag technologies. Yet, there has been a disconnect between farmers and the ag tech companies launching new products and practices. The disconnect that exists from my perspective is the fact that these companies come from a technology background, not from a customer inside background. So they tend to be PhDs, they tend to be engineers, they tend to have fabulous ideas, but do they actually understand how to apply that on a farm? They tend to come from Silicon Valley, tend to come from cities, not necessarily from a, from, from a farming background. And the ones that succeed are certainly succeeding more, are clearly those who come where somebody in the team or several members of the team have actually grown up on the farm, that, that can be a make or break criteria also for their success. Each of the startups that follow have been through at least one accelerator program in an attempt to move their idea to market sooner. They are also the ones experts say are worth keeping an eye on. First target for a, 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 an innovative vaccine is uh, against PERS virus. It's porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome uh, is the name of the disease and it's caused by a, a virus, a respiratory virus. Um, this particular virus has been uh, identified in swine for uh, well over 25 years. However, it's a highly mutating uh, type of virus similar to influenza and swine influenza as well. And uh, because of that, uh, current vaccines, current treatment regimes have uh, not been successful at, at actually eliminating the, uh, the, the problems with, uh, with this virus and when it impacts the, the herds. Um, the primary impact that is felt by the producer is a, either a loss of productivity, so the animals just do not uh, convert or grow as fast as they would if they were not infected, uh, but in more severe cases, there, be, there would be an increase in uh, stillbirth or uh, abortions, uh, as well as death within the, the herd when the piglets are born. So it's a very severe disease. Um, the vaccines that are on the market today are primarily live vaccines. Uh, there are some autogenous, uh, uh, traditional autogenous vaccines intramuscularly uh, administered. Our vaccine is administered intranasally. Uh, we believe that the mucosal surfaces of the respiratory tract which is where this virus actually infects and, and affects the animal, is the most important location to develop an appropriate immune response. And so that's how our proprietary formulation of, of vaccine uh, is designed in order to stimulate the immune response in the mucosal surfaces in order to prevent the shedding, uh, the spreading of the virus in the herd uh, and shut down the disease uh, within the the pr production process. Migro is a patented magnetic spray system that is transforming the way crop protection spraying is done. Basically what Migro does is, is use a retrofit system to pass the fluid through a series of magnets that makes it easier for the, the droplets to attach to the crop and solve the biggest problem with convention technology is, is that it gives you good drift control and allows you to use smaller droplets to give you superior coverage, which is a challenge with conventional technology. So basically what conventional technology does, driven by legislation and the, the need to avoid being penalised for drift, uh, farmers use large nozzles, off-the-shelf nozzles, and they add water to the droplets to make them fall to the ground. But effectively all that does is contaminate the soil, rivers and streams. So worldwide this huge amount of pollution because of that. So they're complying with legislation but they're getting very poor coverage because all growers know you need small droplets to give you good coverage to kill the fungus, the pest and the bacteria to get that uniform coverage. Conventional technology can't deliver that. And what Magro does is allows the farmers to use the off-the-shelf nozzles for small droplets without the associated drift problems. Yeah, we have two products. Uh, the first product is Cattle Crush, and, uh, and the focus for Cattle Crush would be to connect to the Chicago Board of Trade and have a quicker access for livestock producers to make decisions on what cattle they're going to be buying or what time, what time is the best time to sell or any type of risk management decisions that they need to be using or making uh, while the cattle are on feed. And we can send texts and emails email alerts to these producers to alert them when a profit opportunity hits because a lot of these producers they went into farming so they didn't have to sit in an office they want to go out there and work we allow them to work but they still get that information they would need if they're sitting in an office right to their phone performance beef is a holistic uh, farm management system that producers are using to track all of their financials and all of their performance data 
So what's really nice about this is that we're we're capturing every pound of feed that's getting loaded into a wagon and every pound of feed that's getting delivered to each animal in real time and very accurately without data entry. So we have a Bluetooth device that connects into the bottom of a scale head on each wagon and allows us to capture that information as it happens. So the experience that the producer uh, faces on a day-to-day -day operation is they, they can grab that iPad, make their quick adjustments on how much they're looking to feed or uh, add or, or subtract on what they're going to feed that morning and it's right there on their application and it goes through that feeding period. It cuts down on a lot of time on, with, with math and figuring out what they're going to feed and it puts it out there for them and walks them through the steps and they're capturing actual information rather than target. Smart Ag is producing um, a system for automating grain carts. So we connect to and automate any number of machinery, but today we're producing the software that will allow you to run your grain cart with no operator in it. Um, so really it's a, you, a solution that is saving you the headaches and hassle of trying to find a grain cart operator every year, trying to train someone for that job and not knowing every day if they're gonna show up to work or not, um, and not always having to sit in the combine and worry about what this person is doing next to you. So our product basically with the push of a button will call a grain cart to the combine um, and allow you to unload your combine onto the grain cart. With the push of a button again, it'll send it to an unloading area um, where a truck driver will get out, unload the um, cart into his truck. As these startups continue to grow their ideas, be sure to visit agriculture.com to learn about the progress they are making throughout 2018. While you're on our website, be sure to check out the other ag tech startups we feature in our Startup Spotlight. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video and click here to see more great videos.